Welcome everyone, I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this is Brickadine, the Legend of Forcina, uh, Forcina or Forcina, how I should pronounce it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be playing this game again. I've actually done some recordings of this game again ever since I actually got a new, um, well not new, but I got another um, PS1 emulator. Um, but my previous recording was a bit sluggish in my opinion, and um, I felt like just going ahead and starting from scratch anyway. So let's do this. Alright, um, so my scrapped playthrough, I was actually playing as a Scalio. There was nothing wrong with it, but the overall, the videos were very long, and even to my standards. Um, oddly enough, I did get a comment in one of, on uh, the part one of my previous time playing this game and showing it to you guys, and they wanted me to play as Carleon and uh, just to compare um, strategies and things like that. So I don't know if that means I have to actually play optimally or not, because quite frankly, playing optimally is pretty easy in this game. Uh, the, the AI just cannot handle it. But I will go ahead and play as Carleon. It's uh, honestly the easiest of the um, of the factions, um, mainly because Carleon and New Almechia are allied, which means they do not fight each other. Um, you can betray them if you want to, but there's no real reason to do so. If you beat the game with your allies still existing, um, it just ends the game and you don't have to actually take them out. Um, so with them as an ally, they only have one front they have to guard. They have one city they have to guard. They have only five, but um, it's easy enough to defend with. And as far as expansion is concerned, it's a little bit more difficult than maybe New Almechia or um, Leonia, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, so yeah, this is Carleon. Um, a small country surrounded by the sea, this land contains mysterious powers. So yeah, um, the ruler of this place is uh, King Kai, and um, he is a warlock who has really, really good uh, magic. He also has a paladin that's really strong. He actually has really good knights overall, so this should be pretty straightforward. I'll play on hard, not that that really matters. Orsena, the land of mysterious rune power. It is the Sacred King Calendar, year 214, Almechia, the most powerful country located in the center of Forsena, has finally won the war against the country of Norgard. It was believed uh, that Almechia was about to return peace to the continent. However, dot dot dot. I will read story stuff, but I'll explain more about that once I Got control again. I'll make you a kingdom, capital Lorgress. What is it, Kador? Your Majesty, a year ago you, you lead us to the victory over the King of Norgard, who was the worst enemy of Almechia. Also, you consolidated uh, our victory by taking away a part of their territory from the King's successor, Vaynard. The peace uh, on this continent and the prosperity of our kingdom are all due to your achievements as the commander of the Almechian army. Get to the point, I know you didn't come here to tell me that. You are right. I'm here to tell you that King Kinguist has a warrant for your arrest. It seems that those who are jealous of your achievements have given him this idea. You're being charged with treachery. That's ridiculous. I have done nothing but devote myself to the uh, victory and prosperity of this kingdom. How dare they question my loyalty? They must die for this. I have done all the preparation and all I need now is your order. What? You're telling me to really become a traitor? There's no other way. It is time you killed the king and became the new leader. You know, casual conversation. Ha ha ha. Your majesty. Well, it wouldn't be so bad to become a king after all. Why wait in vain for others to destroy me? I shall fight since that is the way I live. All I want is power and I will not tolerate anyone uh, who gets in my way. Kator, summon the entire army. It's time those pigs in the palace realize how much power I have. Yes, sir. My only concern is that once I stand up and fight for my throne, I, it will not only cause a disorder in Almechia, but chaos will spread throughout the continent. Do you still wish for, uh, for me to do this, Kator? You must make sacrifices in order for a king to reign successfully. I am certain that uh, you can rule not only Almechia, but also the entire continent. I understand. I am now determined to fight until I become king, reg regardless of the disorder it may cause. The entire continent may be burned in the process. You know, convinced me you twisted him in my arm 
Sacred calendar year, month 2, year 215, a coup d'etat was pulled by the commander of the troops of Mechis. King Hingwes was defeated and the castle was occupied by the commander's army. The long history of the Almechia kingdom was put to an end and the Iskar's empire was born. Around this part, if you are playing as New Almechia, there'll be an additional dialogue with um, Prince Lance being uh, um, fleeing from this place. It is the beginning of a new era of disorder and chaos. The soldiers are, are led to the battlefield where their fate awaits. Alright. Kaleon Castle uh, Linus. Uh, give me one moment, I'm going to check some audio. Okay. Kaleon Castle Linus. Hey Kai, wake up. Wake up Kai. Wake up! What? Is it Marriott? It's still early. Kai, mom used to say that the king should be the role model of the pe people. You're the last one to get up in this castle. You're the king. It's not my choice to become king. There you go again. Now is not the time to be joking. Do you know what ha uh, ha has happened? Did something happen uh, in Almechia? Yes, but how did you know that it was in Almechia? We just heard th uh, the news a little while ago. I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, go get everyone. I need to talk to them. Eating room. So, you were expecting this to happen? Yes, Almechia owes a lot to Zemeckis for its success. But as the saying goes, the hunting dog with nothing left to hunt will hunt its master. With no enemies left, Almechia only had one fear, Zemeckis himself. It was only a matter of time before the king and Zemeckis got into a situation like this. You're not uh, called the qu uh, quiet wise king of Caerleon for nothing. I wonder how he manages to maintain that good reputation. It seems uh, to me that he is always sleeping. He should be called the sleeping king of Caerleon. Give me a break, Marriott. Well, what should we do next, your majesty? I'm sure Zemeckis will try to expand his empire. He won't be satisfied with just Almechia. He received his status and fame through fighting. He will try to prove that uh, he is the king by fighting. The path to, to, to total, total domination. Exactly. In the meantime, I heard that Prince Lance of Almechia made it through and was taken in by uh, Pestile. Pestile will fight for the restoration of Almechia. King Cole of Pestile is loyal to the Almechia royal family. Baynard, who became the king of Norgar, will not miss this opportunity. He has been waiting for the ti right time to strike back. This is the perfect chance for him. So, the war is going to involve the entire continent one way or the other. Or another. That is what I'm saying. Really? Is Caroline going to be alright? Of course it's going to be alright. We have great soldiers like Dinadin, a knight master, and my brother. Well, as a knight, how can I betray the expectations of a beautiful princess? Did he just call me a beautiful princess? I'm delighted. Oh, Mary. Okay, Marriott. As you well... As you all know, we border both the Ascaras Empire, led by Zemeckis, and Escalia, led by King Drist. They will be eager to invade our country, and we should be prepared. Your Majesty, we all agree with you. Let's all prepare for war. I'm afraid the world war will go on until someone brings a new order to this continent. We must do our, our best to be that someone. Zemeckis may be a strong fighter, but he lacks it in strategy. It seems there that there is someone else behind the rebellion. Someone who wants to bring chaos to the continent. It's been a very long time since I played as this faction. It was the first faction I played as when I originally bought this game. So, yeah. No worries here, we don't have to guard this location here. It's a quest. New Al Mechia is our ally, so he's not, gonna, he's not gonna bother attacking us. We'll get the story thing in a, bit, in, in a bit. So, really, our only spot that we have to guard is this castle, Hervory. Of course, once we expand, um, you know, that's all gonna change. Okay, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. There we go. Anyway. Um, of course, we're bottle, uh, bordering Ascaris and Escalio. Escalio is not going to be too big of a deal. Um, now, one thing I want to try out is seeing if I can take one city from Ascaris. Um, supposedly, if you... Now, this could be for the other version of this game that never came to the US. But I believe there's a chance you can get a knight through a quest if you happen to be the first person to take a castle from Ascaris. So I wouldn't mind trying that, but uh, enough of that. Um, as far as story and all that is concerned, I will read all the story stuff. I will read descriptions of characters in our army and any characters that we go up against. Um, 
As far as quests are concerned, the only quests I'll read are ones that involve actual getting characters or specific story things. Because um, most of them are just going to be repeated time and time again and just give random stat increases or injuries or um, random items. And quite frankly, I'm going to have so many spare characters, it's not going to really matter. Now, supposedly this the person that wanted me to play as Carleon uh, wanted to see how I would play if I was playing all out. I'm not sure if I will go 100% all out because that can be kind of boring. Uh, the big issue about this game is the AI just cannot handle you if you go all out. Um, even if you're an inexperienced player, as long as you know some of the things about this game and some of the quirks about it, you can just, you'll win. Um, a lot of the times I didn't do a lot of class changes uh, when I usually play 100%, simply because I, everything died too quickly. I, I couldn't get the levels to actually do any class changes. Um, so that's part of the reason why I was really holding back, and also I wanted to try out some unique units. But there's definitely a tier list as far as units and classes are concerned, so there's definitely some that are better than others. But I'll see what I do. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Over here we got John Fadar. Um, he is a druid, uh, which is a dark and fire caster. Uh, he has an ancient book, which increases his intelligence. And he has some spells and stuff. I'll go into that later. A magician who has devoted, uh, devoted his entire life to perfect the art of magic. Due to the time he spends on his research, he has distinguished himself as the most knowledgeable magician in Caerleon. So yeah, that is him. And I keep pressing all the wrong buttons. Uh, he has a bunch of clay golems and ghouls, which are all awful. Um, ghouls are the weakest units ever. Um, they can class change into vampires, which aren't much better. And if you manage to get all the way to level 20 with them, they can become vampire lords, and that's when they actually get some use out of them. But it's really not worth the trouble. You're better off just leveling up a demon. Uh, clay go the golem classes um, have the most class changes, or evolutions. Um, I think they have like three or four of them. Um, their problem, of course, is the fact that they have really good defense. Their strength is okay. Um, but they have, they're super inaccurate, they're very slow, and they can't hit anything. They, they miss a lot. Also, they have zero intelligence, which means they are very vulnerable to magic. As shock troops, they're okay. Um, one thing that definitely stands out about them is that they're, they have, um, they're immune to all status effects. So they can't be petrified, paralyzed, charmed, poisoned, or silenced. Which can be pretty useful if you're going up against things that do per, uh, paralysis or uh, petrification. More than likely, we're going to probably drop them. Anyway, over here we got four knights. Um, pretty much all the big, big people here. Um, every faction has some evolved units right off the door. Um, Carleon actually doesn't get very much as far as evolved units are concerned. They get a high centaur, which is just an upgraded centaur, which is not bad. And then a kuatl, uh, or however you should pronounce it, or cult. I don't know how you. Like I said, I never knew how to pronounce that. Uh, which is an upgraded wyvern. If you get this to level 20, you can become a Bahamut, which is essentially a really strong dragon. Um, but that's about it. Um, so for characters, we got King Kai. He's a warlock, which is a unique class. Um, now what's kind of unique about him is he has uh, re uh, red, blue, and green elemental magic. But he actually has one healing spell, which is not any of those colors. Healing is actually a, a white elemental spell. So kind of unique. Um, he's pretty much the same as a wizard class, if you happen to get one. Uh, the only difference between him and a wizard class is instead of having react, he has heal, which I guess is okay. So you're probably not going to be using him for react anyway. But uh, really the spells that stand out, of course, are Geno Thunder, because that's a targeted AoE and things like that. King of Caerleon, which is known as the Magic Kingdom, a young man so gentle that he may give the impression that he is a weak king, but he has profound wisdom and passion in his heart. He is also known as the Silent Wise King. Um, Stat-wise, he's okay for a caster. His hit points are decent. He's only le he's level 22, so he has a little bit of room to grow, but not much. Uh, Marriott uh, has an elven bow. Actually, do you have an item? You do not. All right. Um, so Marriott is a scout. Um, scout uh, females are the fem uh, females are the only people that can become archers. So here's scouts. Um, scouts can evolve into either um, Valkyries or not Valkyries, Lancers or um, Archers, and then they'll go down their respective uh, branches that way. Um, since they're the only ones that can actually use bows and stuff, I usually prefer going um, Archers than rather Lancers, though Lancers aren't that bad. Um, Elven Bow just gives increased attack power. 
the youngest, the younger sister of King Kai of Caerleon. She is a tomboy who runs around the castle and brightens the atmosphere. She acts like an ordinary young girl who is not snobbish and is liked by everyone. Now, something to note story-wise is Marriott does become dis um, disabled at some uh, at some point in the storyline, and she it will take time for her to recover. So, if you want to use her, just be aware you won't you'll lose access to her for a time. Dinadin, Paladin. Top tier of his class. Um, pretty much it goes fighter and then it branches into three, two or three different uh, uh, classes. And uh, this route is if you go Crusader and then go to Paladin. Um, so Paladins tend to have the higher, higher defensive power at the cost of attack power, though they're still rather strong. Um, and um, Crusaders end up learning Heal, and once you become a Paladin, you end up learning Heal, Cure, and Holy Word. And Holy Word's an AoE spell. And he has enough MP to actually cast it. It won't be as strong as like other caster AoEs, but it's a very wide range attack and it can hit multiple people. So it's always good to have. Anyway, um, so Dinadin. The strongest knight in Caerleon and the only knight master on the continent. He has a malicious tongue. He doesn't like anything that has to do with the palace. And Kai is the only reason why he continues to work at the palace. So yeah, he's level 25. The max level you, your character can be is level 30. Once you hit level 30, you cannot gain any more levels. Over art. Bishop ends up learning Divine Ray and some various holy spells. Divine Ray is a focused holy blast that does quite a bit of damage. Bishop has worked for the Carolian royal family since the late king. People think of him as being a coward, but it, that, this isn't true. He controls young knights who may act recklessly and supports the king. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll go over some of the monsters we have, which I'm probably going to delete a bunch. Dragons are pretty much the bread and butter for most armies. They are very tanky, very strong. Their agility is kind of low in the beginning, um, but they eventually get become reasonably more accurate as, they, as time progresses. When they hit level 10, they can either become white dragons, which can fly, and are white and red elements, or you can go fire uh, a red dragon, which is still ground-based, but has uh, more fire elements, and then they can evolve into even higher, even stronger forms. Dragons are pretty much the strongest things. They have good breath attacks, which are always good. Uh, the only catch, of course, is a lot of the special attacks, like breath attacks, can only be can only be used if you don't move. Very similar to how magic works in this game. By the way, you can't move and cast in this game. Um, already went over centaurs, but um, high centaurs just have additional range and are just a little bit stronger. Lizardmen are kind of shock troop guys. Um, they can move through water pretty good and get some def extra defense if you put them in water, but. Um, they're alright, they're cheap, um, they can do okay damage wise, and their attack has a high chance of critting, and if you evolve them, they can get a breath attack. Pixies are purely supports, um, they do have a special crit if, uh, for a counter attack, um, which does look pretty good damage, but besides that, the only reason you use them is to silence people or cast protect. Um, if you evolve them into fairies, they learn how to cast React, which can give these characters an additional action during the, during your turn, which is very, very useful. Uh, unicorns, not very strong, but they have healing spells. They can evolve into, um, or evolve into, um, Hekasai, which just get more healing and become flying. Or they become, uh, Nightmares, which they lose all their healing spells, but they get some, like, offensive support, uh, debuff spells. Gens, I will go into later. <laughs> Let's just say gins are ridiculously good for their co for their cost. Um, Coatl, I've already talked about. This is an evolved form of Wyvern. Nothing too special. He does uh, at the evolved form that it is now. It does get an AOE roar, but it, it does have friendly fire. So usually you just use them as a strong Wyvern. Um, and then down here we got a Mandrake, which are really weak. Um, they're slow, but they can move through force very quickly. Oh, they're the only uh, monster in the game that can move through forest quickly. And they have a very weak attack that can cause paralysis. Pretty much they're useless. They have a lot of HP and that's about it. And then giants are kind of the opposite of... Well, not opposite. They're kind of the other half of, of the, uh, the golem. Golems are, you know, high defense. Uh, giants are less defense but a lot more attack power. But they are also just as inaccurate as golems. Even when you evolve these evolve these things at level 10, I've I've seen these guys just miss left and right. They're just they're just so inaccurate. When they hit, they definitely hit hard, but it's just they're, they're a lot more trouble than they're worth. 
especially since it costs 16. You can get a, a wyvern for that. Um, for those who are not familiar with the game, um, monsters do have an upkeep cost, which will take up your mana income. It does cost mana to summon monsters and put them in people and put them in your army. There's also a limit of how many monsters you can have of what types. It's this little number over here. Um, as you can see, if you look at the bottom right of the little character thing I just brought up, um, there's like a thing called cost. That's how much it costs. Um, that's how much room power it costs to um, use. So, for example, King Kai has 319 room power, so he can actually have a lot of things like even dragons, a bunch of those and uh, take advantage of those. But some characters have a lot less, like uh, Marriott only has 221, which is not too bad. Some characters have even lower than that, like 150, which means you can only really have is a bunch of Lizardmen or Jin. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. I'm gonna go ahead and handle some of this stuff here. Let's take a look at what we got here. Oh, we actually have another Evolve monster. We have a Triton. So, Mermen are pretty much useless. They're good if they're in water, but even then, um, they're very slow on land. They, they, they do move great in water. Um, they also get great bonuses if they're in water. Um, Tritons have a special ability, but they can only use it in water. And there's not very many water maps. And most of the time, the AI is not going to go into the water if they can choose. So I'm probably going to drop most of these. I'll probably keep the Triton just to have, but I, there's really not much use for it. Hydras, on the other hand, um, they're slow as well, and they can move in water pretty quickly. Um, but they actually are really good fighting in general. They are very strong. Their breath attack goes out four hexes, which is really, really long. And if you get them to level 10, they become Tiamats, which gets, uh, gets some additional dark element. And then their breath attack goes out five distance, which is super strong. Um, if you, it's, I, I'm pretty fond of Hydras, even though they're like they're just like a slow wall of death that you can position. Uh, Sierra over here it has the Earring of the Sea, which I think gives um, blue resistance and some def uh, additional defense. Um, she's a sorceress, which is bl a blue and black element. So it's pretty much just like a druid, but the opposite. A female magician who always follows King Kai around. She does doesn't like to lose and therefore is always competing against Marriott for Kai's attention. She's very clever, clever and always wins the dispute, but in reality, she is a, a kind person. So nothing special there. Alright. And last place. Uh, so we got a griffin here. Um, griffins are a holy element. Um, they're very similar to wyverns. Um, if you get to level 10, they become holygriffs, which look, they end up getting a ranged like feather attack, which is not too shabby. For their cost, it's not too bad. Um, Alright, and we got a grappler here. This is Shast. Um, now grapplers, their unique thing is they get high crit. Um, and if you take them all the way up to champion, supposedly champions are the strongest physical attackers in the game. Though I've never, ever seen a cha champion. So, it is what it is. Um, now with, yeah, and they don't get any spells or anything like that. They just punch things. They're pretty decent. I just never use them. <laughs> An enthusiastic knight of Caerleon, he considers justice to be the key to everything and is willing to fight anyone who opposes. He always gets into an argument with Denadin, however their teamwork on the battlefield is unique. And then we got Bilcock. He is a priest, which is just the lowest tier of the uh, priest branch. He only knows heal and cure, and that's about it. A priest who spends more time on inventions instead of, pr of praying, which causes Burr Boa art uh, headaches. His in intentions are usually not practical, but King Kai states they are practical, they amuse Marriott. And that is it. We don't actually get very many units, or very many knights in general, but we don't really need to defend that much either. Now, each of these cities have their own up uh, income, and they have their own array of monsters you can summon. Obviously, the capital has the most income and usually has the most variety of monsters you can summon. So, we got dragons here, which is good. Now the bad news is we don't exactly have that much um, we don't have that much mana to work with, so that's not gonna be that's gonna be a problem. So let's go ahead and uh, before we go ahead, before we call it crit quits, let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna delete delete some units. We don't need any of these at all. None of them. We don't need them. Um, does this place have any good summons? Not. I mean, they have wyverns. Um, Hellhounds can hit and run, and they can um, 
they get a breath attack. They have a breath attack, but they're not particularly strong. I'll use them if I have them, but I usually, beyond that, I don't really mess with them. All right. Uh, sequest. There's no one there. I can summon stuff in locations that don't have people, but there's no reason to do so. Uh, this place is not too bad. It has a good variety: Uni unicorns, griffins, and wyverns and dragons. So not too shabby. Oh, before I forget, uh, options. I will be turning off battle scenes, and I'm going to turn off summons because really we don't need to see those. So it's going the battles will go a bit faster. Anyway, uh, summons here. Giant scorpions, which are useless. They can cause poison, but they're super weak, even when evolved. Uh, centaurs are not bad. Angels are pretty good. They can get healing spells. They can cast Divine Ray. So, not too bad. So, do I... Do I seriously... Okay, I do have a location that has Jin, so I can mess around with that. Alright, let's do some organization. Uh, first, we need to delete all useless units. So, these two. This does save us on upkeep and things like that, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, let's go ahead and order some things around. Seeing if how much room I have to mess around with. So I can get to... Something, I can get something like this going. There we go, that's a full, a full group there. More than likely there's not going to be any attacks on the first round, so I'm not too worried about that. But it is still kind of a pain. I'm going to go ahead and start sending people on quests, which potentially could get us some fancy things. Fancy things, sorry. Uh, we'll go ahead and send John Fardar out there. Um, over here, we need to delete some units as well, so we'll go ahead and delete um, this merman. And you know what? Let's take a look. Let's see what can we summon here. We can get hydras and rocks here. Rocks can cause petrification. So it's not bad. But I'll just work with what we have. Um, so for you, I'm actually going to go ahead and send you to the front lines. And what do we got here to mess around with? All these units are fine. Uh, what I will do though is I will consolidate you. That's a little annoying. I'll just exceed there for now. And we will send you. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and send you on a quest. There we go. Now I could either summon a dragon. Or I can, I can either summon a single dragon, or I can summon five gen. I would like, I would like the dragons, but obviously that's a bit expensive. But oh, actually, eh, I can still get two gen, so that's not too bad. I'll get some gen. All right. So biggest issue is we just don't have enough enough fancy resources. Yep, that's pretty much all we got. <laughs> um, that was boards. Eh, we can take it. Yeah, we'll go with that, I guess. So really all this first round is going to be is just kind of consolidating what we have. So, all right, you're doing your thing. That's great. All right. I think the front line has dragons, so we can take advantage of that. I think it does. Nope, it has angels. That's fine. All right. Well, not much else to... Uh, do here, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this a video. Uh, when we come back, we will um, see how things go from there. I'm the Depressed Eeyore, and this was um, Ricketing. See you guys later.